Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Angel Storm. Thank you so much for tuning in once again. Today I'm answering the question about what when the narcissist goes away, the narcissist does what's called a discard, and then they leave you alone for a certain period of time, and then why do they come back? First of all, the time in between is called the hoovering stage. This is really important to know because the narcissist has never really gone away. They're still there, and I'm going to show you a little video that demonstrates exactly what's happening in this stage, but they are watching you from afar. And yes, this can be through social media and through third parties, you know, driving past your house or whatever it may be, but this can also be through energetic connections. This is why understanding the spiritual connection, the spiritual root of narcissism is so important because if you don't learn how to clean your ties and your covenants with other people, you need to understand there's something much more powerful than this natural realm that's governing whether or not they have access to you. So what, what happens here is that the narcissist never really wants to let go of supplies. Narcissists are energetic vampires. Once they understand that they can have access to you whenever they want, it's easier for them to put you through the cycles of narcissistic abuse, including the discard phase, and ultimately following that, the hoovering stage, which then they will come back through the love bombing stage. They just want to make sure that they feed you a little bit of energy to kind of keep that energetic tie intact so that they can have access to you whenever they want. So if you've experienced this, especially if this is the first time that you're experiencing this where, you know, it was a really insane breakup or it was a really insane way that the relationship ended for whatever reason, and then nothing happens, right? The narcissist goes away and you're kind of left to pick up the pieces and you're kind of wondering what is going on and you're really reflecting back on all of the behavior that you did uh, in the past. And you might be thinking that this breakup, this split of the relationship is your fault. That you, if you hadn't said X, Y, and Z, if you had actually done what they had asked, if you had done, you know, whatever, then this wouldn't have happened. But I really want you to know, if you take nothing else away from this video, that's just simply not true. What you think was the relationship was not the relationship. And again, it's it's that you and the narcissist were looking at the relationship from two opposing angles. You were looking at the same picture, okay? And you could have been thinking, I want a companion. And they were thinking, I want a companion. And you said, you know, I want a future. And they were like, I want a future. But that you had two very different ideas of what that was going to be. The narcissist always had it in their mind that you would be their supply for what a companion, what a relationship, and what kind of things would come from this relationship in to benefit the narcissist. The narcissist already had that planned out long before you were thinking about, oh, this could turn into something amazing. And, you know, I could have this incredible relationship with this person. Long before you were thinking that, the narcissist already saw how you would be useful or beneficial to them, ultimately achieving some goal that they had long before they met you. Okay, narcissists are opportunists. They will often see, oh, you, you could do this, but you could also do this. Okay, great. But they're, they're very long-term strategists. They can see the way that moving moving A, so getting into a relationship with person A, and then that would open a door for me to get into a relationship with person B, person C, per, and so on and so forth. They, they are playing a game of chess. And it's really important that you understand that. This was never like, hey, let's see where this goes. For the narcissist, it was always about figuring out how much the exact ingredient amount of love bombing do I need in order to get this person hooked? And then how quickly can I turn the devaluing stage on in order to get their nervous system off track and then follow that through the disregarding stage where I discard them and get rid of them. And then I see how they behave with all three of these ingredients in them now. And in the meantime, they've also isolated you. They've done a bunch of things to make sure that you don't have a support system. They've really confused who you think you are and your worth and, and what you believe yourself to be capable of and so forth. And you're, you're thinking that this is all your fault. Well, the narcissist had already planned this ingredient for your relationship, for your connection from the start. So I want you to know this was never your fault. This was always how it was gonna go. It wouldn't matter if you would have said X, it wouldn't matter if you wouldn't have said X. This was always going to be the outcome that was going to be there. Okay, I want to show you now a little 
uh, video, a quick video. This is called Curlian f Photography. This is a method of measuring or, or capturing the energy that l different life forms have. Okay, so even once something is removed from its life source, let's say a leaf from a branch or a branch from a tree, you, you understand where I'm going with this? Once you have removed something from its life source, there's still a connection there. But what happens if you take a leaf and cut it in half? Watch this video with me to see what happens. This video shows that even when the leaf is cut away from its life source, it is maintaining a certain amount of energy and it will keep that amount of energy for actually a, a really long time. But you can also see what happens when you cut that leaf in half. When you cut that leaf in half, there's still this energy there. It knows I'm missing a part of myself. This is what happens when unhealthy soul ties are formed. This is also what happens when healthy soul, soul types are formed as well, but I'm gonna just talk about the unhealthy ones because that's what we're all here trying to break. When you have an unhealthy soul tie with someone, they could be physically gone from you and yet their energetic presence is around you, okay? This is why you can feel them in your house. You can feel them laying in your bed. You can feel their thoughts. You can feel their, their energy around you. That's not something that is made up. That is not something that is an indicator that you're crazy. This is something that is an, an awareness from your instinct that you were God given to you, that was God given to you to alert you that something is going on here and I need to figure out what it is. A lot of people don't understand that that missing part of the leaf, that top part of the leaf that was cut away in this video was a counterfeit. That's the narcissist. Instead of being a whole leaf by your own self, you are allowing the narcissist to drain you of your energy, take as much space of your life as they wanted, and leaving very little for you. And so when they're gone, it feels like your whole life is gone because that's how much space they were actually occupying in your life energetically. Energetically, that's how much of your energy they were devouring on not a daily basis, a second by second basis. And that's how much energy they still have access to if you don't break these soul ties. One of the things that I um, have a meditation for, I'm putting it in the description of this video, is a meditation to help you break the trauma bond. The trauma bond is a physical, biochemical structure that shows up in your body when you are connected to somebody, specifically an abuser. And you need to break the chemical connection that you have to them, the physical connection that you have to them in their in your body in order to help you accurately break the soul tie. By the way, if you are breaking just the soul tie and not replacing the covenant that was made when you, when you entered into that soul tie, you'll never break that soul tie. That soul tie will keep coming back and keep coming back. This is why a lot of people can't figure out why they can't stop the behavior. It's almost a compulsion, like they can't control it. And that's because energetically, they can't. They cannot make a different choice. They can understand, I need to stop doing this, but the, you'll still see them making the same decisions, same choices over and over and over because they are energetically bound to a law. There is a principle governing what they do that is making it so that this pattern keeps repeating and it's because they didn't go higher. They didn't break the covenant. You need to understand this. This is this is more important than understanding who's a narcissist and what does narcissism sound like and, and who's a predator and all of that. This is why my coaching focuses on getting you back to who you are, your actual authenticity, who you are before but long before the narcissist came in, even long before your parents decided you a name, you actually had an identity. And it's so important that you're connected back to who that is because that's the only thing that's actually going to produce your own life force. You have to be connected back to the true life source so that you can create your own life source, that you're not depending on somebody else to kind of tell you what your mold is, what your shape is, what you should be thinking and wearing and doing and saying. And all of that kind of stuff is manipulation. It's control. And you're be bound to energetic laws that are keeping you in repeating the same shape, repeating these same decisions, repeating the same mold that you are trying to break unless you get reconnected back to your true divine original source. That's what my coaching is all about. Also, if you're interested in joining my Narcissistic Detox Intensive where I can help you understand exactly how to do this step by step by step, 
You can text the word detox to 512-677-9322 where I'll take you through exactly the steps one by one on how to do this. You also have access to a 24-7 support group so that you can get feedback from other people who are experiencing the same exact things that you are. You are not alone. Now that we've covered exactly how to get rid of this, what do you do once you recognize this is what's happening? What should be your next first step? Your next first step needs to be making a commitment. Do you see that leaf that only is half left, but the energy is still there? You need to make a commitment to the leaf that's half left of you, the one that is still the true original you, you, your authentic self. You need to make a commitment to that version of you that you are going to go no contact. Sometimes it's impossible to go no, no contact. And so there is something called low contact. And I also have a video on how to go low contact. Uh, but you need to make a no contact or low contact commitment to yourself because you need to start taking back the energy that you are giving by thinking, thinking, thinking about the narcissist all of the time. Doing toxic rumination is only strengthening that energetic bond. That's part of the soul tie, okay? Your soul, just to recap, is part of your, your mind, your will, your emotions, your intellect, and your imagination. Those things, your personality, those are all included in your soul. So your thoughts are very powerful. They are creating that soul tie. They are creating this energetic bond. So you need to commit to going no con no contact in the natural. No stalking their social media. No texting them. Block them. Okay? No communicating with them through third parties at all. All right. If you have to go low contact, you do something different, please go check out my video on that. It's in the description of this video as well. So you can check that out after this one. The longer you go no contact in the natural, I want you to start going no contact in your in the soul realm, your your will, your mind, your emotions, your intellect. I want you to stop ruminating about them. Yes, this is difficult to learn how to do, especially if you don't get trained help, but there are things that you can start to do. One of them is to start replacing your thoughts or getting your thoughts back on track every 30 minutes or every 60 minutes. So come up with the things that you want in your life some affirmations. I have a video on how to write affirmations if you're interested in doing that. But some things that you want to achieve in your life, and I want you to put these on your, uh, to go off on an alarm on your phone every 30 or 60 minutes. You want to be meditating. You want to be, and the word meditate means to sit with it. I want you to sit with the things that you do want, not with the things you don't want. That's what you're doing in toxic ruminate, rumination. You're sitting with the things that you don't want. I want you to sit with the things. I want you to meditate on the things that you do want. I want you to start learning how to pour into your own cup. This will feel really uncomfortable at first and it will feel like it'll never happen. You'll have all these negative thoughts that will come up. Ignore those things. Don't judge them. Don't be frustrated with them. Accept that they're there. Okay, they're valid. They're they're giving their opinions, right? But I still do want these things. If I'm being honest with myself, I still really do want these things. Just sit with the things you do want. Learn how to do that. You'll start shifting the energetic flow of, of where the leaf is going. Instead of having the counterfeit half leaf, you'll start to regrow who you actually are supposed to be. So if you're really interested in taking back your power, start doing that first. And I will see you in the next video.